friends. Um, I know you guys mean business because you clicked on a Chronicles video. So thank you so much for joining me and for your understanding. I might try to read chapter three and four again because these names are in the Bible, the word of God, which means they're very important. I think the genealogies that are in the Bible are important for us to know, to understand, to dive deeper into, to maybe pick up some study Bibles, a concordance if you need to. But there are so many resources available to do deep dive study in the Bible and it's our time to connect with God, our time to learn about his character and what he has to say to us. So we're going to be reading First Chronicles, so we'll start with chapter 5, and I might go back and reread chapter 3 and 4, but I'm just trying to get through it right now, try to get comfortable with these names, and do my best to honor God as I read his holy word. So thank you so much for joining me. First Chronicles chapter 5, the descendants of Reuben. The oldest son of Israel was Reuben, but since he dishonored his father by sleeping with one of his father's concubines, his birthright was given to the sons of his brother, Joseph. For this reason, Reuben is not listed in the genealogical records as the firstborn son. The descendants of Judah became the most powerful tribe and provided a ruler for the nation, but the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, were Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel were Shemaiah, Gog, Shimei, Mika, Ria, Baal, and Bira. Bira was the leader of the Reubenites when they were taken into captivity by King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria. Bira's relatives are listed in the genealogical records by their clans. Jael, the leader, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, son of Shema, son of Joel. The Reubenites lived in the area that stretches from Aroer to Nebo and Baal-Meon. And since they had so many livestock in the land of Gilead, they spread east towards the edge of the desert that stretches to the Euphrates River. During the reign of Saul, the Reubenites defeated the Hargites in battle. Then they moved into the Har Hagrite settlements all along the eastern edge of Gilead. Next to the Reubenites, the descendants of Gad lived in the land of Bashan as far east as Saleka. Joel was the leader in the land of Bashan, and Shapham was second in command, followed by Janai and Shaphat. Their relatives, the leaders of seven other clans, were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber. These were all the descendants of Abihail, son of Hurai, son of Jorah, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Jeshai Shai. I'm not sure if I have that right at all. J E S H I S H A I. Jeshai, son of Jado, son of Buzz, Ahai, son of Abdiel, son of Gunai was the leader of their clans. The Gadites lived in the land of Gilead, in Bashan, and its villages, and throughout all the pasture lands of Sharon. All of these were listed in the genealogical records during the days of King Jotham of Judah and King Jeroboam of Israel. There were 44,766 capable warriors in the armies of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They were all skilled in combat and armed with shields, swords, and bows. They waged war against the Hagrites, the Jeturites, the Naphshites, and the Nodabites. No no Nodabites. I think I might have that right. They cried out to God during the battle, and he answered their prayer because they trusted in him. Wow, yes. So the Hagrites and all their allies were defeated. The plunder taken from the Hagrites included 50,000 camels, 250,000 sheep and goats, 2,000 donkeys, and 100,000 captives. Many of the Hagrites were killed in the battle because God was fighting against them. The people of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh lived in their land until they were taken into exile. The half-tribe of Manasseh was very large and spread through the land from Bashan to Baal Hermon, Sinair, and Mount Hermon. These were the leaders of their clans, Ephar, Ishai, Eliel, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodaviah, and Jehadiel. Jehadiel. These men had a great reputation as mighty warriors and leaders of their clans. 
But these tribes were unfaithful to the God of their ancestors. They worshipped the gods of the nations that God had destroyed. So the God of Israel caused King Pul of Assyria, also known as tiglath pileser to invade the land and take away the people of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh as captives. The Assyrians exiled them to Hala, Habor, Hara, and the Gozan River, where they remain to this day. Chapter 6, the priestly line. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The children of Amram were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar was the father of Phineas. Phineas was the father of Abishua. Abishua was the father of Buki. Buki was the father <laughs> was the father of Uzi. Uzi was the father of Zerahiah. Zerahiah was the father of Moroah. Mer Mariah, Mariah, go figure. As soon as I get confident, I start to fall apart. Mariah was the father of Amara, Amariah. Amariah was the father of Ahitub. Ahitub was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Ahimaz. Ahimaz was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Johanan. Johanan was the father of Azariah, the high priest of the temple built by Solomon in Jerusalem. Azariah was the father of Amariah. Amariah was the father of Ahitub. Ahitub was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Shalom. Shalom was the father of Hilkiah. Hilkiah was the father of Azariah. Azariah was the father of Sariah. Sariah was the father of Jehozadak, who went into exile when the Lord sent the people of Judah and Jerusalem into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The descendants of Merari included Malai and Mushai. The following were the Levite clans listed according to their ancestral descent. The descendants of Gershon included Libni, Jahath, Zimma, Joah, Ido, Zira, and Jira Therai. I'm not sure if I have that right again. The descendants of Kohath included Aminadab, Korah, Aser, Elkanah, Abinasaph, Aser, Tehalath, Uriel, Uzziah, and Shal. The descendants of Elkanah included Amasiah, Ahimoth, Elkanah, Zophiah, Nahath, Eliab, Jeroam, Elkanah, and Samuel. The sons of Samuel were Joel the older and Abijah the second. The descendants of Merari included Mahalai, Libni, Shimei, Uzzah, Shimea, Haggai, and Asiah. Asiah. <laughs> the Temple Musicians. David assigned the following men to lead the musical house at the Lord at the house of the Lord after the ark was placed there. They ministered with music at the tabernacle. Until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they carried out their work following all the regulations handed down to them. These were the men who served along with their sons. He-Man, the musician, was from the clan of Kohath. His genealogy was traced back through Joel, Samuel, Elkanah, Jeroam, Eliel, Toa, Zuf, Elkanah, Mahath, Amasiah, Elkanah, Joel, Azariah, Zephaniah, Tehath, Aser, Abisaph, Korah, Ishar, Kohath, Levi, and Israel. He-Man's first assistant was Asaph from the clan of Gershon. Asaph's genealogy was Adiah, Ethan, Zima, Shimei, Gehath, Gershon, and Levi. He-Man's second assistant was Ethan from the clan of Merari. Ethan's genealogy was traced back through Kishi, Abdi, Malak, Hasabiah, Amaziah, Hilkiah, Amzi, Bani, Shemer, Mahalai, Mushai, Merari, and Levi. Their fellow Levites were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle, the house of God. Only Aaron and his descendants served as priests. They presented their offerings on the altar of burnt offering and the altar of incense, and they performed all the other duties related to the most holy place. They made atonement for Israel by doing everything that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded them. 
the descendant of Aaron and Eleazar, Phineas, Abishua, Buki, Uzai, Zerahiah, Moriah, Amariah, Ahitab, Zadok, and Ahimaaz. This is the record of the towns and territory assigned by the means of sacred laws to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the clan of Kohath. The territory included Hebron and its surrounding pasture lands in Judah, but the fields and outlying areas belonging to the city were given to Caleb, son of Jephune. Je Jephune, I'm not sure if I'm getting that. G E P H J E P H U N N E H. Jephune. So the descendants of Aaron were given the following towns, each with their pasture lands Hebron, a city of refuge, Libna, Jatir, Eshtemoa, Holon, Debir, Ain, Juta and Beth Shemesh, and from the territory of Benjamin, they were given Gibeon, Geba, Alamath, Anatoth, each with its pasture lands. So, 13 towns were given to the descendants of Aaron. The remaining descendants of Kohath received 10 towns from the territory of the half tribe of Manasseh by means of sacred lots. The descendants of Gershorn received by sacred lots 13 towns from the territories of Issachar, Ashir, Naphtali, and from Bashan, area of Manasseh, east of the Jordan. The descendants of Merari revived, received by sacred lots 12 towns from the territories of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the people of Israel assigned all these towns and pasturelands to the Levites. The towns and the territories of Judah, Simeon, Benjamin, mentioned above, were signed to them by means of sacred lots. The descendants of Kohath were given the following towns from the territory of, of Ephraim, each with its pasture lands. Shechem, a city of refuge in the hill country of Ephraim. Gezer, Jokmium, Beth Horon, Ajailon, and Gath Rimen. The remaining descendants of Kohath were assigned the towns of Aner and Bileam. From the territory of the half-tribe of Manasseh, each with its pasture lands. The descendants of Gershorn received the towns of Golan and Bashan and Ashtaroth from the territory of the half-tribe of Manasseh, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Issachar, they were given Kadesh, Deborah, Ramoth, and Anam, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Asher, they received Mashal, Adbon, Hukuk, and Rehob, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Naphtali, they were given Kadesh and Galilee, and Galilee Haman, and Kiriathium, Kiriathium, each with its pasture lands. The remaining descendants of Merari received the towns of Jokmium, Karta, Rimon and Tabor from the territory of Zebulun, each with its pasture lands. From the territory of Reuben, east of the Jordan River, opposite Jericho, they received Bezer, a desert town, Jahaz, Ketamoth, and Mephath, each with its pasture lands. And from the territory of Gad, they received Ramoth and Gilead, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer, each with its pasture lands. And that's the end of First Chronicles chapter 6. So we got through First Chronicles chapter 5 and 6. And the genealogies don't go through the entire book of Chronicles. I, I don't know exactly where it stops. I think around chapter 9. So we're getting there. These names are very important. And many of them will sound familiar as we read through them. So when you're hearing a name that sounds familiar, try to think of where you remember that. What story do you remember it from? Do you remember it from Samuel? Do you remember it from Genesis? Do you remember it from Kings? Where did you hear these names before and why is this so important? Why did the genealogical record matter so much? Well, God cares about all the details. God cares about all of us. He knows all of our names, our wishes, our desires, our dreams, and he wants us to trust him. And you see in the Bible that when the people count on God and they lean on him and they trust in him, their paths are made straight. But we have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not lean on our own understanding. God is so good and he does care about us. He knows you by name. And that's such a beautiful blessing. Can you imagine being in the Bible and God having things to say about you? Would you want him to say that you were blessed and godly and kind? Or would you want him to say that you are evil 
we're all evil in ways. We all make mistakes. We're all sinners. But we're saved by the blood on the cross. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that. God is so good to us. And he's so good to us to provide us with his holy word. And we are so blessed to spend this time reading his word together. So I hope you join me again soon. I hope you're having a great holiday. And I am truly, truly, truly grateful to have you here. I'm praying for you. And I appreciate your prayers. And have a great day. Have a great night. See you soon.